Animation has been built into a high grossing element in both film and video games. While the audience watches or plays, they rely on these portrayals of CGI and animation. One of the most important aspects of these films or games is the character's influence to the audience throughout the performance. Characters are portrayed based off their attitude, their walk, and their actions. The character animation goes hand in hand with character development as the character builds throughout the story. Animators take time to represent each lead character with a specific animation for each one of their actions. When a key character is animated, they are best displayed based off their experience and their backstory. Their animation brings them to life, which in time brings the audience to understand the character's emotion. A character with a limp could show damage past, while a character, say with enthusiasm, would look anxious. When creating a character, the animator is not only focusing on the animation of the character alone, but they also must blend that character's animation with other animated characters and the environment together. When an animated character is created, their size, their shape, must fit the universe around them. For instance, when you look at Toy Story, all the main characters are toys. So in this case, all the environment around them is a lot larger than them. The first CGI lead character in a feature-length film was a ghost. In the movie Casper, directed by Brad Silbering, the ghost realistically interacted with the actors. The actors depended on animators to create the ghost's animation to fit their portrayal on camera. As this is a normal attribute in film, you usually see a difference in video games. Both game animation and movie animation are quite different in their own ways. In an animated film, the animator focuses on animating what is in the view of the camera's shot. The movie obviously plays out the same each time and each character having the same animated roles. Although this might sound like a piece of cake, everything that is in the shot needs to be attractive to each one of the viewers. It almost has to be perfect on camera. It takes years to go over every scene multiple times and to make sure the animation is just right. Now, Game animation is more interactive with the viewer. When a character is created for a video game, they are programmed to do specific actions based off the player's response. So for instance, if a player wants to jump, they would tap the button that is associated with the jumping mechanic, in which the character would animate a jump. Based on the player's actions, the game animation will deliver a different outcome each time that game is played. Every animation that a character presents is mixed with another set of animations that is specifically programmed for that character. Say for instance a main character would have a different set of animations than a non-player character. An NPC character would have a lot of set of animations that are specifically programmed for them. So you can say the programmer and animator work closely together to get each character on the right path. The first CGI feature length animation was Toy Story. This is the movie that everyone flipped out over because it was the first time anyone has seen this kind of animation. Over time, animation has grown into film and into games. This is a great example to show when time grows, animation also grows with it. Besides creating characters from scratch, some movies and games have something called motion capture, or in other words, mocap, in which the actor's movements are placed into the animated scene to create their character's animation. Directors and creators can go another step up from motion capture and do something what is called performance capture, in which the actor's movements, facial expressions, and voice is captured all at once. Unlike performance capture, motion capture captures everything separately. With performance capture, the actor would be acting out a performance as if they were acting it out in a live film. Examples of characters that were created with performance capture include Gollum from the Lord of the Rings trilogy and Caesar from the Rise of the Planet of the Apes, which in both cases were performed by Andy Serkis. Death Stranding and Hideo Kojima's next game will include performance capture by Norman Reedus as well. If you want to see more on Death Stranding, I post a series of in-depth analysis videos on my channel on the game, which you can find in the card above or in the description. Video game development also relies heavily on character animation to present emotion in a character. Growth in this technical field has been extensive. When you look at a game from the NES, the N64 or PlayStation to current gen consoles, you find a massive change in animation. Characters started as a sprite, a bitmap graphic that resembled a character as a static or animated image in a 2D environment. Characters grew from a frame by frame image to a character that has animation throughout their body. A good example I like to go by is Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series. Nathan's appearance and personality is influenced by the thrill seeker, Johnny Knoxville, actor Harrison Ford, and by his voice actor Nolan North. So it's easy to say that Nathan Drake is quite the adventurer. I used to be an adventurer like you, and I took an arrow in the knee. I'm sorry guys, I just had to. But one thing I love about Nathan Drake's animation in these games is that the animation is constant. When the player moves them around, he responds, if not perfect, close to it. The animation makes Nathan seem wary of his surroundings, and he even reacts to the environment around him. Am I the only one that wants to jump from building to building after playing this? <coughs> uh, please, please don't. Um, only Nolan North and Drake can, okay. Demand for more animation and characters grow constant throughout each generation, as it's an important feature to graphical design. As virtual reality has brought us closer to a game than we have ever been entirely. 
head movement, hand coordination, and synced activities is motion in this reality. We are in the very early stages of VR, but as it matures, the audience could see an incredible result in animation and experience. And just imagine what that future of character animation will consist of. We will probably never see a stop in growth in character animation ever, but of course I am not complaining. Thank you guys greatly for watching this video. Share the video with your friends and family, and if you like the video, click the like button down below. I've been working on this in-depth analysis video for quite some time now, probably like three weeks or so. It's my first technical in-depth analysis video besides me just making analysis videos about certain video games. If there's any other animation or game mechanics you would like me to go over in a future video, please let me know. I didn't really even go full into detail about performance capture itself and I would love to talk about that in the future. So the next time you watch an animated film or play a game, take a look at the character animation to see if you find anything interesting. Also put down in the comments down below what your favorite animated character from a film or a game is. Again, thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.